Hello everyone, in this lesson we're going to be talking about the Maxwell-Boltzmann distribution curve. Now before we draw it out, the reason I've done it separated like this with a table is because many students have seen this Boltzmann curve, but they don't really understand the way it works. And so what I've found is that by drawing it out, you get a much better understanding of what it actually means. So let's analyze it carefully. On the x-axis, we've got energy of particles, and on the y-axis, we've got number of particles. So our table starts at 0, 0, because obviously there are no particles that have no energy. Everything in life has to, be, has to have some type of energy, okay? Now, then there were particles that had 5 joules of energy, and if we counted how many there were, there were 4 of them. Then, for the... Then for the 10, now I'm not going to go through each of them with you, but I'm just explaining the first two or three. So the number of particles that have 10 joules of energy, there were nine of them, okay? So there were quite a lot of those. Okay, and I'm going to complete the rest. What we can then do is draw a curve through this. And so this now gives us an idea of the energy within the system. So for example... The particles over here, these are your very high energy particles because they've got 40, 45, and 50 joules of energy. These are your very low energy particles. And then most of the particles, or the most, was for this one over here, which is 15. So there were a lot of particles that have 15 joules of energy. Now, can you guys remember what the name of the energy is that the particles need to have in order to be able to react? Well, well done if you said that that's activation energy. And so energy is on the x-axis. And so let's say that for this particular kind of reaction, let's say that the activation energy is 30. So I'm going to draw a line down here at 30. And so remember, the part, it's only the particles that have more than enough energy. Only those ones can react. So our x-axis is called energy, and our activation energy is 30. So does it mean that these particles on the left can react or the particles on the right? Well, well done to you if you said it's those on the right. Because if the activation energy is 30, then you need to have 30 or more in order to react. And so all of these have enough energy. They've got 35 joules, 40 joules, 45. Whereas everything on the left here, they've got less than 30 joules. Now, let's say I start heating this reaction up. Is that going to cause the activation energy to become less, become more, or stay the same? Well done if you said stay the same. Remember, your activation energy is the energy needed for the reaction to take place. And that can't be changed unless we use a catalyst. Because a catalyst is able to show the particles a different way to react. But what will an increase in temperature do? It's going to increase the value of each of the particles energy and so this point might let's say each of them goes up by three so this will go to three this will go to eight 13 so now what we need to do is analyze what, what that will do to the shape of our graph so so the energy of particles three there will be zero of those so this point will simply move over there this point which was originally so four of these particles they now going to have an energy of eight so this needs to move a little bit up to about there. And so what we'll see is that each of these points is going to slide to the right. And now I'm going to connect the dot through the new points. And so the new graph is the one in red. So it shifts slightly to the right. It, gets, it's, it moves over to the right. But now what's interesting about that is that the number of particles that can now react is everything to the right of the activation energy. And so all of this can now react. Whereas in the previous one, it was only this that could react. And so what we can see is that by increasing the temperature, we increase the energy of the molecules. And so more of them get pushed over the activation boundary. Now the next thing we could do is we could add a catalyst. Now the catalyst does not increase the energy of the particles, but what it does do is it allows the particles to react in a better way, which requires less energy. And so your activation energy, which is the minimum energy needed by the particles, that becomes less. And so we can shift that line to the left. So now I've shifted the activation energy to 25. I'm not gonna move the graph because 
that would imply that the energy of the particles is changing. But what's nice is that remember everything to the right is able to react and so now all of this can react. And then compare that to the original which is where only this part could react. You see so there are two main ways that we have manipulated this graph. Either we increase the temperature which causes each of the points to increase in energy. So if this point was originally at 5 joules, it then slides a little bit to the right because now it's at 8 joules. But I don't slide it upwards because that means I've now got more particles. That doesn't make sense. And then, and then that caused the graph to shift over to the right hand side. The other way is to leave the particles alone and then just add a catalyst which lowers the activation energy and so more particles will naturally have enough energy. So here's an interesting question to try to help you understand the difference between temperature and catalyst. So let's say you are at a training camp and you want to become a Navy SEAL. Now one of your requirements is to be able to run a 5 kilometer in 20 minutes. So let's say there's a thousand of you, okay? Now let's say the 5 kilometer in 20 minutes only 250 people qualified. The others were a bit too slow. What would happen if the time gets increased to 22 minutes? Would that cause more people to qualify or less? Well, obviously more people would qualify. Now, did we increase the energy of the runners or did we just make it easier for them to qualify? Well, we just made it easier for them to qualify. That is what a catalyst does. It doesn't increase the energy of the particles. It just makes it easier to react or to qualify. And so when I showed you the, the Maxwell-Boltzmann distribution curve, I initially had the activation energy at 30, meaning that if you do not have more than 30 uh, joules, you cannot react. If I then change it to 25 joules, now I'm, allow now I'm making it a little bit easier for the particles to react because they need less energy, and so more of them qualified, but I did not change the energy of the individual particles, just like I didn't increase the energy of the runners over here. And so a catalyst does not influence the particles, it just allows an easier way to react, which requires less energy. The last thing that we need to look at is what happens when we change the concentration. So let's say we are going to increase the concentration. Okay, so increase concentration. So what that means on a practical level is that if you have a container filled with particles, then if you increase the concentration, the way that that happens is that you add more particles into the container. So let's maybe, let me actually draw it like that. And so now all of a sudden you have more particles. However, you are not changing the energy of the particles. You're not making them move faster or slower. The only way to do that would be to change the temperature. So by increasing the concentration, you are increasing the number of particles. So in our table, for example, energy of particles at zero, that will obviously stay zero, but the energy of particles that have five joules, there will now be more of them. Maybe there will be seven now, and maybe there will be 12 of these, and 16 of these, and I don't know, 14 of these, 10 of these, five of these, and so on and so on. And so what happens is that you are increasing the number of particles. So for example, if we look at this point over here, what this point tells us is that there are four particles with an energy of five. Now, all of a sudden, if you increase the number of particles, maybe there'll be seven of those. So this point will go up to there. And then what we'll see, if you just keep going on, is that these points are all going to go higher up. So we're not making them go left, I mean right or left, because that would be changing the energy. We are making more of them, so we are going up. Okay? If there were less particles, then you would just go down. And so we have something like that now. Now we're not changing the activation energy. That would only be through a catalyst. And so if we had to now go draw this blue graph, it would look like that. So what we can see is that the number of particles that are able to react has now increased. Okay, so that is how you handle concentration. So in summary, guys, temperature, temperature makes the graph move right 
or left. So for example, if you increase the temperature, then each of these are going to increase in energy. So the whole graph is going to shift to the right. If you decrease the temperature, then each of these points would move over to the left. And so your graph would actually look more something like that. And so your activation, the, the, the part that is on the right of the activation energy would be less. Changing a, adding a catalyst doesn't affect the shape of the graph, but it just causes the activation energy to become less. So for example, it goes there, and then all of a sudden, all of those particles can react. And then lastly, by changing the concentration, you are changing the number of particles. And so your graph goes up if you are increasing the concentration, or down if you are decreasing the concentration.